<laughs> I like that chain, PA. What's that chain, man? Oh, come on, man. You know I got Come on, man. Board. I didn't come through as I was about to break out the guns, man. I didn't know you was gonna come out like that. Oh yeah, man. Get a good look, man. You should have told me you was coming through with that. I got the tiger over on deck, man. Come on. That's what lions do, baby. <laughs> <laughs> oh. That's great, man. I love Canada. I love, I love it. Yeah, I love Reach too, man. No doubt. Yeah, we're that's, trying to reach yeah. with this song right now. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Global reach. <laughs> that's the goal. Right. That's the goal. So I looked into your guys' background, and it's pretty heavy. Could you tell us how you started your journey into the world of music? Well, yeah, Aaron, you you go first all the time. Thanks, bro. Uh, so yeah, so I got into music uh, when I was in middle school. I played the the jazz saxophone, the tenor saxophone. I saw the band playing and I was like, man, I want to do that. So I started playing the saxophone and then that transi transitioned into dance, which transitioned into acting, you know? And then I've always had that musical bone that I never knew that it would come back up. And then one time, a couple years ago, I got an opportunity to audition for a boy band, which I did. And that's where I could kind of bring those skills back into the forefront and sort of uh, play with those skills. And Paul was a part of that. So I learned a lot from him. And uh, now because of this whole COVID lockdown, I decided to take a full opportunity to just put my music out there. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I was talking about how we connected, you know, I mean, those of you who don't yeah. know, I've been in the music business for some uh, 38 years, actually longer than that all my life, singing on the street. Uh, with my brothers and my uh, father when I was 12 years old. And then uh, we've been fortunate enough to get levels of, of gold, diamond, and platinum success with a multitude of different acts. Um, yeah. One of the things we always hang our hat on is finding uh, uh, talent at its embryo stage or coming up. We've been credited with helping being on the forefront of young acts such as Lisa Lisa McCall Jam and Rihanna and working with Fergie and Nicki Minaj, oh. Becky G, and uh, most notably, the Backstreet Boys and NSYNC and uh, LFO and a lot of boy bands. Okay. You know, I mean, we're actually working on a uh, remake of one of our songs with AJ from the Backstreet Boys right now. So I'm excited about that. So a friend of a mutual friend named Jean Tanzi, she told me of an idea that she was putting together for a boy band. Yeah. She was credited on finding, I think, three of the original Backstreet Boys. So I said, okay, Jean, I'll work with you because she's always trying to be in forward motion. And then uh, yeah. at, the, at the audition, I met Aaron and a few other talented kids. And uh, at that point, I was like, okay, I know what work it takes to get into it. And I, at this time, I wasn't ready to put the work in. But sometimes when creativity calls, you you don't think, you just react. That's yeah, what I did. just let it flow. Yeah, 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 as it should naturally. And then... um. Out of yeah. them, um, Aaron seemed to be the one that was a go-getter. Actually, all of them were, but Aaron was always grinding, always moving forward, trying to get things going. Sometimes over-ambitious, over-zealous, overdoing it. Sometimes he's over the top. And I always tell people, yeah. I'd rather have somebody that's over the top or over-zealous, and I have to channel it as a person who do not have that. And I gotta feed yeah. that. That's more work, you know. Yeah. So um, yeah, that that's true. Yeah, yeah. So uh, it was wonderful working with him. You know, I have supported him in his acting, uh, helped cultivate yeah. his rap and music, and uh, everything just came together very, very organically. You know. Okay. <laughs> you guys are pretty talented. You're also in acting. Could you tell us how you got into acting as well? Yeah. So um, I was a dancer before I became an actor. Uh, I was dancing for this ballet company in Chicago and I was auditioning for this one that I really wanted a job in. And uh, I had a slight injury. I hopped over a turnstile in Chicago, actually, the CTA. And it wasn't even dance related. And uh, I had a slight yeah. sprained ankle and um, I got the offer for the company that I was auditioning for. I couldn't take it because I was on crutches at the time. I said, man, what do I do? <clears throat> I came back home to my apartment in Chicago Chicago basically was just as a, I was sleeping on a mattress basically and living out of two suitcases and I was like man what do I do I said screw it I'll act I jumped on Craigslist and I literally just started submitting for everything and anything that I could and what started as some you know little like dinner theater show with like 10 people in the audience 
turned into getting scouted by a manager and doing movies now and TV shows. And yeah, man, it's, it's amazing that you just, you make one decision in your career and it could change your entire life. What would you consider differences between the two art forms while you're delivering your performances? I think they're the same, man. I, I think it's all about storytelling. I really mm -hmm. think it's just about storytelling. It's like, um, you know, with, with, with acting, you tell a script with, with music, you, you have the lyrics, that's your script. That's your story that you're telling. Yeah. Given the engagement, given the genre that you're working in, if you're working in horror, you're working to a certain audience. If you're working in rap, you're working to a certain audience. You know, you're hoping to attract other people outside the audience as well. But I think it's all about storytelling. So I, I actually see them really, really like this. Because when you're rap, yeah. I mean, when I was working with Paul in the studio, he's like, Aaron, you're telling the story. Whenever like my raps weren't hitting, he'd be like, you're telling the story. You're telling the story. It's about you telling your story because that realness comes through and you can hear it in the music. You can hear it on the mic. Yeah, because it's a performance art. Yeah, completely. Yeah, yeah. I mean, my, my, my dad always taught us that a singer is an actor. You know, and I learned that early on when we were younger, 14, 15, doing shows, performing everywhere. A singer is an actor. Um, yeah. You know, I've been fortunate enough to perform in front of 10 people. I've been fortunate to perform in front of 100,000 people. And it's still the same. You don't give it up. They, they are yeah. intertwined, as Aaron said. And then I, I would tell people, don't sing the song, become the song. You know, don't sing, don't, don't, don't act the role, become that. I mean, full force, we're known for being... I mean, our reputation in business is impeccable. People say, man, I love those guys. Yeah. We're very loving, we're very affectionate, we're very open. You, you can greet us. Uh When I was asked to kick somebody's ass in house party, I turned out on that other switch. You understand? But again, look, 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 guys. Why are you sweating me, man? Look, you're wrinkling my school clothes. Ooh, you're wrinkling my school clothes. Ooh. <laughs> Yo, wait, 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 wait. What's the problem? What's wrong? Your mama can't afford no iron? I'll tell you what. <laughs> tell her come on over to staff, all right? I'll put her on the stroll. She can save up, get one. Watch out, watch out, man. Watch out. So it yeah. is what it is. What it, yeah. what it want. You can get this side, you can get that side, whatever it is, all same same side of the same coin, you know? So because you gotta entertain. So, yeah. 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 Paul Anthony, you have worked with some of the biggest acts in music history. Could you describe what it was like working with people like James Brown? Yeah, man. I mean that's one thing about being a um a producer or a writer uh, or an influencer in the studio because not only am I bringing the best out of them, even if they're a legend, but I'm also taking a little bit of them for myself as well. You know, working with yeah. the only producers on the planet to write and produce an entire album for the Godfather of Soul. No one could say that. So working yeah, that with is... him, yeah, yeah. You know, and work with him. That's pinnacle, I yeah. Absorbed his energy. And then to know that when I was 12, under the Apollo Theater stage, watching the paint chips fall down as he's doing, um, give, you know, one of his famous songs, and years later to produce him. And I'll never forget, you know, yeah. I told him, Mr. Brown, if you believe in us the way we believe in you, we'll put you right where you belong. And to show you how I absorb his energy, he said to me, and I quote, Look here, I love you. I love you, like my son. We're going to work with you. We're going to come back around. We're going to work it out. I said, thank you, Mr. Brown. Thank you so much. Thank you. I don't know where he's at, but it's all good, you know? So working yeah. that with you. And then again, to work with one of the greatest boys of all time, Philip Bell of Earth, Wind, and Fire. I wrote a song. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and I worked with him and produced them and worked with them. And then working with little Kim, she called us, you know, her Terry and Jimmy, my boys, uh, Jimmy Jam and Terry Lewis are my best friends. Yes, yeah. Was, you know, so with little Kim is very special because we vibe. And I think we're the only guys that really worked with little Kim and Nicki Minaj. I'm just saying, no, this is Bowlegged Lou's son. Okay. You remember Bowlegged Lou and I? Absolutely. Was, yeah, we were signed to fan. them. Wait, were you signed to them too? We were, yes, with the group. 
Our group was signed to them because that's his father. The boy I just called, that's Bo Legaloo's son. Correct me if, I'm, if I remember this right. Did they call me once? You were on a record with, uh, with them, and you, did you do a verse on a, one of their songs, an uh, older song? Not, oh, not one of the oldest, like when they were trying to come back. Uh, do I have the wrong song? I'm you never not did sure. a verse. I'm not sure. I am so. Wait, what was the group called again? Um, Full Force. <laughs> When I was a kid, the, your biggest fear was one of full force stealing stealing your girl. <laughs> really? <laughs> like that? Oh, absolutely. They was hot out. They was like, <laughs> those girls wanted to get with them. Yeah, we'd be in the studio. That, yeah, that's moon, that's right? historic. Yeah, yeah, we'd be in the studio writing. We stop, you know. So that's special. And then you know, working with Rihanna, she was you know she was always confident. Even at seventeen, eighteen, she was confident. But then there's Simon yeah. with Bob Dylan, where he was very unique in his energy. You know, we did two great songs with the great Bob Dylan. So I'm blessed to go all kind of genres. So when I think of somebody like Owen, he reminds me of myself. Yeah. Because I was always the guy in full force that did things that others couldn't, say things that others shouldn't, and, and, and wear things that others wouldn't. I was always that guy yeah. on the edge, pushing the envelope. But you have to do that sometimes, you know? So uh, that, that natural energy comes through, working with others and working with full movers like, like Dalavella. Yes. How was it creating this new single between the two of you with the experience that you come with and the new energy that he comes with? You first, Paul. You you take this oh, one. Take this one. Um, well, briefly, I mean, um, like Aaron reminded me of, um, <laughs> you know, it's so funny because they talk about us on a tour. I remember way back in the beginning uh, when we started with Curtis Blow. Run DMC used to open for us. Uh, I wrote basketball for Curtis Blow. Me and my brothers full force. Yeah. And I remember when Rick Rubin brought these three guys to the office. I remember they walked in and they're like, who the hell is that? And, he, and Rick was like, hey, man, this is my new group, the Beastie Boys. I think they're going to get large. I said, yeah, what y'all do? Let me hear something. They rap, and they yeah. still had that white guy rap, but they had conviction. They had believability, you know? Yes. One took it up here, you know? Mike would take it here. Ad-Rock would take it down here, but they covered everything. So Aaron had that same energy. So since on the project, we were doing songs that made you attack, I said, okay, now there's a time to attack, and there's a time yeah. to correct. So in this track, I said, Aaron, let's just let's just caress it, you know, let's just caress it, just, just be smooth with it. Because the name of the song was um, you know, uh bring it. So I like the way she moved the thing, thing. Yeah, she got the song, Diamond Rings, old Jane, yeah. what I mean. I said, yeah, let's and it was just laying in a cut. It just felt like, ooh. It was I didn't see there's something about sweet friction. When I'm talking about sweet friction, I'm talking about try to envision porcupine making love to some butter. Listen to that. Listen, listen, listen. Yes. No, no, listen, that's listen. not what you, you said. We gonna ride the beat like Tonto. Oh yeah, we that's ride the beat like Tonto. <laughs> ride the beat like Mommy Tonto, baby. You're not even the yeah. Lone Ranger. The Lone Ranger, he said He's shit. boring. The Lone Ranger's boring. Yeah. He just stand there. Tonto just be, you know. <laughs> swag. Tonto has swag back man, there, baby. Man, I, I, you know, this when, when, when we was working with Paul in the boy band when when we were still a thing. You know, we had this joint, bring it, and it was to another beat and everything. And I spit the best verse I ever spit while working with the band. And I said, man, we got to do something with yeah. that. And after things happened and yeah. and things fell, thing, things went their uh, way, I came back to Paul and I said, Paul, we got to do this song. I, I, mm -hmm. I actually like said to Paul, I was like, well, we got to do this. And he said, well, well, are you, do you want to do a comedy song? Are you going to do like a real rap song? I said, nah, man, I want to do a real rap song. I want to have my rap that I spit from Bring It. I want to, you know, you do your thing, change the track, add stuff and stuff. And so he said, okay, I'm, I'm in. So then literally that's when we started building. I'm so happy we did that because yeah. I love the, the track yeah. is smooth. You know, it's a smooth. It's like how Nas rides the back beat. How late can you be before you're late? You know what I mean? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's such a, like Paul said, it's such a difference. Some days you're attacking and aggressive and other days you're just like, all right, let me pull back. You know what I mean? So, yeah. 
Yeah. But yep. having that versatility too, as an artist, people are like, oh, wow, they can do that too. There's a lot of artists out there. They just sound the same for everything. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, Aaron, you just brought up Nas. Mm. I noticed listening to your music, it has a certain hip hop style. Mm -hmm. Could you tell us who are your influences? I grew up listening to Kanye West, you know, 808s and Heartbeat and My Beautiful Dark Twisted Fantasy were my favorite, favorite uh, albums by him. Also, Jesus Walks, that single. Uh, Nas, I grew yeah. up listening to. I grew up listening to MF Doom. I grew up listening to Eminem. Eminem's a huge influence for me as well. Um, and then I, I you know listening to the classics too. Like I grew up listening to Dr. Dre and Snoop Dogg, you know, and then a mix of that. And then I got into Beastie Boys later on in life. So trying to find yeah. a mix of things and depending on the vibe of the track, because the, the beat will inspire me to have a certain flow, you know, as opposed mm -hmm. to having an automatic flow for every beat. You know, that keeps me kind of on my toes as an artist being like coming up with yeah. different kind of things. But those were my main influences growing up. And I was also influenced by a lot of rock. You know, I listened to rock growing up. I love classic rock from Journey mm -hmm. to ACDC yeah. to, you know, Ozzy Osbourne. You know, I love that. I listen to metal to myself, classical, opera. You know, I'm, all, I'm a garbage head when it comes to music. So it gives yourself a range to pull from when you're creating your music. Yeah, because yeah. like, who knows? Maybe I might do a rap track that's got guitar in it. You know, that's that's yeah. awesome. That's dope. You know, Run DMC and uh, Walk This Way. You know, Run yeah. DMC and ACDC. Yeah, come on. Paul, you have been an influence on artists today. Could you tell us who has influenced you to be what you are today? that's a good question pa <laughs> <laughs> oh man you know what the, it, it it varies you know if you're talking about true school or if you're talking about a uh, true school rappers i have so many influences because i yeah. graciously and selfishly take a little bit from everybody so if you're talking about hip-hop um some of the people influence me are friends influence don't have to be somebody from yesterday it could be somebody yeah from it could be right now you know? yeah well, yeah, it's like I remember sitting on a, uh, uh, I remember sitting on a, a jet flying from L.A. to Bogota, I think it was Bogota town, I think so, and we was going, it was a big, before there was Sony, there was Columbia, and I remember yeah. flying on their, their, their jet, uh, the Concorde, and they were taking a few of their artists to where the retreat was, and I remember in the special VIP cabin, we was up there, and a young L.L. was in the back just Writing, yeah, said, working on me. He said, Yo, man, I think I have the first hip hop ballad. I said, Really good. I said, What is it? Let me hear. He said, When I'm alone in my room, I think it's in it. I said, What's the matter? He said, I need love. I said, Yo, man, finish that. That's fire. Yeah. You know? And I remember how he was on the edge of that. And we go way back because my first movie was Crush Group. And yeah. when, we on this, when we was on the set, I remember she was in the movie with us. Me and her laugh about this now, but I remember when Prince came to visit. Everybody had to clear off the other side. Mm. The Prince is coming, and Ella was just Prince. <laughs> and Ella was just sixteen years old, and he was like, Man, "I don't give a damn who's coming there, because all I need is my radio." You know what I mean? Yeah. So that influenced me. And then think about working with the great Patti LaBelle and how she brought her stuff. And one of the guys, uh, another guy that I formed a great friendship with, is Paul Stanley, the rock group Kiss, because yeah. when he uh, sent a um, Send a limousine for me to come to their concert. I met Gene Simmons and the way they do the show. Full force, we dressed as rockers. Uh, we have a, we had an R&B sensibility, but a hip hop attitude. So we were yeah. ahead of our time and we dealt with everything. So the fact that I seen how they got the crowd and rock, that influenced me. So for me, there's lots of influence. I have a little influencer right now. I manage, you know, and even Aaron he yeah. influenced me because. You know, the attack, the way he's trying to do things, he's always grinding. He's always yeah. working. And that gets my support. I have a 14 year old girl I manage named um, Baby Magic, and she has like 350 IG, but she's always grinding. Love that. And that's energy. Yeah. That's the energy personified, the transfer. And that's how we're supposed to do. So, you know, I have a number of influence, old and new, you know? Yeah, that's, that's good draw from different 
eras. Absolutely. We're supposed to, man. How else are we going to live forever? That's that's the goal, to live forever. Yeah, timeless. That's right. Now, would it's you timeless. rather live forever or Rick Ross wants to be rich forever? <laughs> So he, right. Rick Ross said, I don't want to live forever. I'm going to be rich forever. Right? Yeah, how about both? <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> yeah, both, eh? <laughs> yeah. Upload my brain into some artificial intelligence, you know? No, oh, oh, it's funny. That's what she said. But anyway, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> That's the joint. Bring it. That's the joint. Just like that. <laughs> So, Aaron, are there any other artists out there that you would like to collaborate with, and why? Oh yeah, um, yeah. you know the classics, man. If dude, if I could, the, you know, collaborate with Kanye West or Eminem, like for mm -hmm. you know. But then yeah. obviously the newer artists, like if I could collaborate with Migos, I think they're just so cool. <laughs> you know, I I just think they're so yeah. Cool. We and have then, that new what? flow. Yeah, they have that new flow. Yeah, that new flow, man. Yeah. It's just cool. It's just a cool. And um, I'd like to collaborate with uh, rock groups like Papa Roach or someone like that. That that would be cool too. So I'm open yeah. to it. I'm open to it. This this music thing, me putting out my stuff is 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 really fresh to me. So I'm keeping it open and and discovering it and stuff, and it's really exciting. Okay. And you get your third song to collaborate with PA, man. So like, that's, that's dope. Like that doesn't right. happen all the time. Sometimes mm -hmm. you go, how many songs before you collaborate with Legend? Reach, so, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's, that's true. Yeah. So are there any stories that you guys would like to tell from when you're doing your acting? That you think your audience would like to know? What do you mean? Like you any mean, moments you while you're on set? While we're on set doing our movies and stuff? Yeah. Or like, or like, while, do we have any stories between me and PA that we share? Well, both. Okay. If, or either if, or. You have, if, we, if you have that too, that would be... <laughs> what stories we got, PA? <laughs> <laughs> I know oh, we man. got something, bro. Yeah, man, we got a couple of stories, but I tell you, we can't, we can't tell you those, you know what? Because the stories that, the stories that are hotter than ones we can tell you right now, haven't even been written yet. They come in. So you just got to, you, you know, you get that in a second interview, okay? Yeah. Okay, okay. <laughs> so is there anything else you would like to let people know? Are you guys going to do a music video for the single? Yeah, so... Yeah, so we we've, we've got some we've got some ideas, we got some plans. We just launched a TikTok campaign. Okay. Actually, to influencers, reach out to some influencers to to cover that because we think the song is really uh really suited for TikTok. We've got some uh, people interested in running it on the radio as well. Um mm -hmm. and then we're planning on obviously pushing the streams. We're planning on, you know, ways to feed the streets as well via visuals. Okay. So where could we get the, the, the new single? Oh, on all, AWOL just put it out last week, um, yeah. the 18th. So it's all available on all music platforms. We're pushing people to the Spotify or wherever they find music. Okay, do you guys have any social media handles that you want everyone to know oh, to absolutely. be in contact? Okay. Yeah. Uh, at Aaron Dallavilla. That's my, um, that's, you can find me everywhere, Twitter, Instagram, okay. Facebook, all that stuff, at Aaron Della Villa. And then my Spotify, I just go by Della Villa. Yep, and mine is uh, The Real Paul Anthony on IG. Um, okay. Yeah, I mean, that's the main thing there, you know, get in touch with us. And I want everybody to stay tuned and, and, and check out Aaron's site, check out mine, because we got a lot of interesting things coming. Wow. But there may be okay. a bring it challenge there may be a bring it something we may you know you never know what we may give away uh the yeah. women here in the next house party uh concert that may do in 2021 uh we'll perform the song you may be in our video you may go out to lunch with Aaron Dallavilla and be careful uh -huh. because if you do the brother's known for getting you alone and wearing a Viking helmet and a diaper with the camcorder, with the midget in the corner. It's going to be off the chain, baby. 
<laughs> don't know what you're gonna get. <laughs> I don't know about all that, man. Times change, bro. Times change, man. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. But uh, we're all about having fun, and we're going to yeah. definitely, definitely put a lot of ladies in, like the song says. I like the way you move your thing, thing. Yeah, you got that honey make a bee sting. Yeah, you're sure they want to make his bell ring. If you bite a bad chicken, you could swing it, bring it. Bring it. Yeah. Oh yeah. So we can come away. Yeah. We want. We want to see who can who can rap the best to Adela Bell. We might have to put you in a yeah. remix. As a matter of fact, that's no. What we're wait a minute. I like that. I like that. We're gonna do a. We're gonna, we're gonna mm. see who can. Let's do a remix challenge. Yeah, the remix. We already got people who want to jump on the remix, bro. Yep. Like, yep. The remix people challenge. are already hitting up, being like, yo, can we jump sure. on this? My boy okay, was so like, you... yo, this has a fat Cardi B vibe, this song. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's an explicit yeah. throwback. It's an explicit yeah. appreciation to the yeah. acts that came before, but with a new, like, new school like feel to it. So you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, and, I and like that. We're going to do a remix that. channel. Whoever can rock the chorus, whoever can rock the verse. I the like that. The yeah. flavor. You know, there may be some cash prizes. We're going to put that out there, man. You know what? Uh. Man, you're a lucky dude. You're getting this an exclusive first. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> We're coming up with this stuff right now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, my man said, look, I don't have to know the whole interview. I can read this shit right here and get it popping. And look, I inspired them. Go ahead, man. You rocking, man. <laughs> well, I, I remember um, stuff. Thank I you, guys, man. I, I, pleasure, man. I remember a story that um, I remember PA, PA and I, we, we would get on the phone because we were creating the song together. I remember calling him one time and I was like, yeah, like, should I change the verse? And, I was, and he's like, all right, well, let me hear it. And I was like, I was just talking. I was like, you know, um, I run the place in LA and hit the shot and win the game. But and he starts, he starts on the other line. He'll be like, run the place in LA. And then by the time we're done, we're both like stacked to the beat. Like we're literally like we yeah. get amped up and shit. <laughs> and then we're like, man, that's fire. Keep it the way it yeah. is. You know what I mean? Yeah. You start talking yeah. through something, then you get super hype about it. We yeah, we excite, excite each it. other. You know what I mean? Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, well, that's, that's what it's good. about, you know. Make fun, have fun. Bro, if you're not having fun doing it, man, it's why be in it, bro? Acting yeah. or music, these are ruthless industries. If you're not enjoying it and loving every second of it, why do it? Yeah. Go sell plastic or something. Yeah, Real yeah. Real talk. Makes sense. Yeah. Real talk. Okay. So, I want to thank you guys for the interview. It was fun yeah, and yeah, fun and informative. Thank you, Kevin, man. Thank Appreciate you. that, man. Thank you for having us. Yeah, yeah thanks. Okay, man. Yeah, it's all good, man. And and t do me a favor. Tell your lady or your wife or girlfriend, don't blame us if chicks come after you because you've been hanging with Dalabella and Paul Anthony. You ain't awful. <laughs> <laughs> you sit it right there. That's the proof. <laughs> <laughs> all right, man. Have a blessed day. Take okay, care. you too, man. Much all right. Later, bro.